here with uh, Salvatore Speciale, the owner of Chow Osteria in Centerville. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about his restaurant in the age of COVID-19. Sal, uh, I'd like to start with a little background. Tell our audience about um, the story uh, that led you to open a restaurant and, and how you got here today. Okay, well, uh, long story, kind of not long, but um, uh, I was born in Italy. I came to the United States, uh, grew up in New York. Uh, I ended up going to the Air Force Academy in Col Colorado, graduated out of there and basically uh, served in the United States Air Force flying fighters. And then I don't know why, but I've always owned restaurants and uh, this is my uh, seventh uh, restaurant basically that is uh, available. Uh, in 2009, I got rid of the other restaurants and in 2014, uh, we, uh, we basically were customers or rabbit port from other restaurants that we have owned. And Chow Studio came available, this location came available in Centerville. And uh, we just basically took it and opened it up uh, April 17, 2014. Fantastic. Yeah. And we've, we've talked a little bit about what you're doing to help healthcare workers mm -hmm. as they deal with uh, the coronavirus. Tell us a little yeah. bit about how you've been pitching in with the community. Sure. Uh, so, you know, my wife is, uh, was a labor and delivery nurse for about uh, 16, 18 years uh, out there. And she'd been a nurse for almost 24 years. So we had a relationship with Furrow's Hospital, lots of friends there, lots of doctors and, and nurses. And when this all started to happen and uh, we were, uh, my wife was talking to one of the nurses there and she said, how are you guys doing? And, you know, are you guys eating okay? I said, yeah, it's okay. And so we decided, they said, hey, you know what? We're going to go ahead and bring you, how many are you on the ER? There were 25 of them. And so we decided to bring them lunch. And when I delivered the lunch there, they came out with their mask. And when they took their mask, they had such a smile on their face. And, you know, it kind of just motivated me even more. And I said, hey, you know what? We're going to go ahead and bring you dinner. And then we just brought them lunch and dinner ever since, basically. And we've been expanding. Uh, and it all started basically where a congressman from Chicago, uh, Congressman uh, Marty Russo, uh, was listening to this story that I did. And he left me a check for $700 to wow. kind of be part of the, you know, the meals and donating and everything else. And there was a customer right behind him who overheard the conversation. And now uh, after he left, he said, hey, I want to leave you two stacks of $200, $2 bills to be part of this, uh, this, you know, this feeding of the first responders. Uh, you know, I had this money and I didn't know what to do with it. And basically I was talking to the congressman and he said, you know, maybe you ought to start a, a fundraiser of some sort, you know, put it in. So I asked my daughter-in-law to open up a a GoFundMe, she sometimes she does that for animals, uh, you know, shelters and, and people. She's very good with that. And so I called her up, Stephanie Haas, and she opened up the GoFundMe and we start, we put the money in there. Because out of the GoFund, 100% of that, uh, the money is being used to buy the food. I pay for the labor and the utility of the restaurant. So that kind of does two things. It feeds the first responders and it keeps my workers, uh, you know, working. And how much money have you raised so far? So initially we started uh, with $100,000. That was our goal. We reached that within seven days, uh, seven to eight days. Uh, now we raised it to 250,000. Uh, last night we were up to 135,000, surpassed 135. And then what happened was the nurses at Fair Oaks basically uh, either got in touch with either Channel 7, uh, ABC, and they came over and they said, hey, can we follow you on a, on a story, on a delivery? And so they came to the restaurant, did a little story on it. They followed us, you know, the driving and bringing it to the Fair Oaks Hospital. And we got to Fair Oaks Hospital. There must have been about some nurses and doctors, probably about 10 to 15 people there. And they all started clapping when we got there. And he asked me when I was at the restaurant, I goes, what do you do this? I said, well, you know, this is who we are. We are Americans. And, you know, when we run into problems, when we have trouble, we all help each other. We're a big family. That's the way I look at the United States. 
you know, we can have a little disagreement and argument just like you do in a family. But when we hurt, we all unite and come together and, and we help each other. So I said, that's why. And I said, plus what motivates me the most is when they take their mask, there's a huge smile because of the meals that we bring, their restaurant meals, you know, and, and as you well aware of Chow City as one of the top restaurants in Northern Virginia uh, out there. And so uh, he came over with a camera and they were filming and when they all took their mask off, they had them a smile, they were clapping, he interviewed a bunch of them. And as we were leaving, we said goodbye um, to Jay and uh, the, uh, the cameraman was Scotty and they both came up to us and they said, you're right, you know, the smile is worth, you know, he said, uh, you know, the work that you do. So Absolutely. then we started expanding it. Um, that's fantastic. You know, I think that's a story that, that everyone wants to hear and probably needs to hear in this, in this stressful time. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to switch from that to your thoughts about what all of this means for restaurants moving forward. Yeah. Um, how do you think COVID-19 and the impacts we've seen so far will change how restaurants operate in the future? You know, that's a really good question. And uh, so I'm a fighter pilot. And so as fighter pilots, you know, when you go out on a mission, it never goes the same way. It's like driving from here to uh, Washington, D.C., from Virginia to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. on 66. And yeah, you have to always, adapt. Always different. Yeah, it's totally different. You think you're going to be driving at 60 miles an hour, but then there might be an accident. There might be traffic and you have to adapt. You have to switch. You have to get off 66. So in a fighter pilot, it's the same way. Basically, you know, you, you brief a mission. You're going to go out there in a mission. And as soon as the first missile, the first bullet comes across, everything changes. So you adapt very quick at a very high speed. So as I was watching this coming, basically, you know, we were adapting to the new world of the restaurant. This is the new world we're going to be living. Uh, we were doing, you know, 300, 400 reservations, you know, on, on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday. We had a 30, 40 minute wait. And all of a sudden, everything has changed. And as a matter of fact, I had a meeting with my people last night. And I said, you know, when we open up, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a totally different restaurant. So we have adapted, you know, basically to curbside pickup. We have done deliveries. We have never done deliveries anymore. And, and the pickup. So everything changes now in the restaurant, you know, because we went from serving people, you know, a, a salad first and then an appetizer and then a meal and then the coffee and then the dessert to all of a sudden having a complete meal ready at one time to the customer out at the curb. And so we have quite a bit of a line, you know, that we have. And so my employees are all there working. And so I have kept all my employees uh, at the restaurant. So we, we have to get ready for something new. It's going to be definitely a different, I figured for the rest of the year, it's probably going to be like this. And even when we open up, they'll probably be like, if they allow us 10 people to come in, it's going to be awkward. Some people are going to still be afraid to come out just because I think we, we have put so much fear in people's, in, 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 in people's head. And, and I think, you know, uh, it's going to take us a while to overcome that fear. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And, you know, that leads up to a, a follow-up question. Um, do you think that as you possibly look for other spaces or, you know, just speaking in general, do you think restaurants will, will get bigger, they'll get smaller, they'll stay the same and just utilize their space differently? I, I think a lot of restaurants are not going to come back. A lot of businesses are not going to come back. You know, there's a point of no return. You can stay shut down for a very long period of time. I think that's just my personal view to the point that you can't come back. And I've already had calls. Uh, we had a call from uh, two restaurants that said, hey, uh, do you want some equipment? And I said, I don't need anything. It's free because we're not going to open up again. So they're just shutting down and just walking and stuff. And it's really, it's really hard. Like if you have a space that sits 200 people and you're only allowed to have 10 people in there, it's not even worth opening. By the time you have the utility and bring out the cooks and everybody else, those 10 people that you serve, you know, that even if you can bring 10 people at a time, you're still not going to get that 200, 300, 400. So I have a feeling that a lot of businesses are not going to open up. And if you do open up, it's going to be a lot. The smaller restaurant will do better than the larger restaurants. Makes sense. Um, we kind of want to go back to, to the personal side here. Uh, you mentioned keeping your staff employed, doing everything you can to, to help them through this time. 
talk a little bit more about that. Tell us what you're doing to protect your staff um, as they go through this, you know, challenging economic time and also dealing with people's fears of possibly getting sick. You know, one of the things that we, we do is uh, I, I always go back to the military because that's what my background is. And that's what makes us, you know, probably one of the best militaries in the world. Before you go out on a mission, <clears throat> on a flying mission, you give a brief. And for a 30, 40 minute flight, you know, when you're going to, for a dog fight or in, uh, in, in, a, in a, a war zone or whatever, you do a two, three hour briefing, then you go out and do your flying and then you debrief for another three hours. So for almost a, uh, a one hour flight, you're briefing and debriefing almost four hours out there. So I do the same thing with my staff. We brief before we start and we debrief after we finish, you know, and every day we're adapting. And so the first thing I did was I briefed them and said, hey, we're gonna be facing tough time. We can be like a family. One of my greatest movies of all time, and I think it summarizes life, is The Gladiators. The Gladiator, when he was standing in the oh, arena. I love that movie. I love that movie. He stands yeah. in the arena, and if you remember that, he said, if we all stick together, whatever comes out of those doors will defeat it. So us as a country, if we all stick together, we can defeat it. We can win, you know, we've won. We, you know, we, we can beat anything. We can, we have landed on the moon. We have landed equipment on Mars. You know, we have found vaccines before, but we have to stick together. Unfortunately, these are kind of times right now that <clears throat> there's a lot of <clears throat> disagreements and, and things like that, but not as much. And so if we work together and we stick together, our enemy right now is the virus. That's our enemy. And for us to get back to work. Fantastic. You know, I think we've covered uh, a lot of ground here and I'll just close it with this question. You know, is there anything that people don't know about you or your restaurant, whether it's a business thing or a personal thing that you want them to know? You know, one of the things about, you know, any business, you know, um, a squadron, a business, a corporation, you have to care about people. You have to treat, you know, people with respect and like they're part of my family. Every day I go around to all my, you know, all my employees and I talk to them. I go, hey, how are you doing? How are we doing financially? How can I help you? Sometimes people just need someone to talk to them, somebody to listen to. I think if you listen to your people and you talk to your people sincerely, sit them down once in a while. Give them a 30 seconds, 60 seconds, let them talk. You'll find out quite a bit about them. And then you'll find out that they learn to love the business and they learn to respect you. And I think they'll work harder and we all work together. And I always tell them, hey, we're all in this together, just like the gladiator. If we stick together, we work together, we're just going to succeed. And this is where I basically give 110% of the success of Chow right now that you know, we're, we're holding our own is basically to the employees. The employees are the, the backbone of my business. You know, I'm just basically the, 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 you know, the head, basically, that kind of speaks. And but you have to you have to constantly you talk to them. These are these are really hard time. You know, there are folks out there that go home and maybe they don't have somebody to talk to. And you need to be like the father, the priest, the chaplain. You need to be the list the listener out there. I, I think you'll succeed. That's great. Um, well, we really appreciate your time this morning, Sal. Uh, we're standing with you and all the other retailers Thank that are affected by this horrible pandemic and um, looking forward to staying in touch. You know, right now we're wearing, uh, we're wearing a shirt. Uh, we made this for the first responder. I don't know if you see the back, but I'll turn around. And this is what the shirt says. I love it. Basically, I love it. we're not I giving up. It. We sell the shirt for $25 and all the money goes towards the first responders. And uh, that's how David Muir on ABC World News ended it because we're not giving up. And so we're not going to give up. We're going to keep doing this. That's it. We're not either. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it. We're a great country.